Hey guys, this is Alex from Gains. I hope you're doing great today. This is your weekly crypto recap. Not much happening in the market, so we're just gonna get started. The first news is about Coca-Cola, and they're going to be available in more than 2,000 vending machines across Australia and New Zealand, and BTC will be accepted as a payment solution. So this is quite a cool initiative. I know that many people go to bars or restaurants that accept Bitcoin just because they do to try and spend some Bitcoin for fun. So I'm assuming this will be a good publicity for Coca-Cola and they also have plans to move in the US. And we keep going with Saudi Arabia. Their central bank is injecting liquidity in local banks via blockchain. They injected more than 30 billion dollars the last week and how they are using blockchain is actually not specified but it is quite cool to see maybe you know more transparency with all this money printing uh, would be good and another news in India about their digitizing cargo trade documents using the cargo x blockchain platform there are news about the supply chain and the use of blockchain every week, but I wanted to feature this news because it's uh, it happened on June 11, and here's the price of the Cargo X token. As you can see, June 11 was here, and the token did about 2x from June 11 to June 16. So usually news in crypto, people say buy the rumor, sell the news. But in this case, it wasn't the case. So I think it's uh, quite interesting to see that sometimes the pattern um, can be different. In South Korea now, an insurance giant is going to use blockchain tech for mobile messages. What's pretty cool is that, well, obviously these guys, they need to know that their customers received critical messages, right? Since it can have uh, very big implications, they can have legal matches. And so what blockchain will do is that it will ensure the user receives the message. It will prove the notification reached the customer. So it's a good use case of blockchain. They will work with the very known uh, KT Corp firm in South Korea, which is also known if you're uh, an esport enthusiast, so good to see blockchain being used in the real world. And more use case of blockchain in the real world, the New York Times is going to trial a blockchain system to combat misleading pictures. So essentially what it will do, it will just um, scour the internet and see if pictures can be found somewhere else and we try to match these pictures so it's um, in a very early stage it remains to be bettered but it's still uh, something promising as you can see every week big companies are trading pilots for blockchain use cases so it's very cool and Microsoft is actually releasing an ID tool for the COVID-19 and also maybe a health passport. So there are some criticism about it. The big picture is about creating a decentralized identity for the internet, right? Maybe having, uh, not having to use Google or Facebook or Twitter to log into third-party websites, but having something independent that you know uh, would take better care of your data. And more precisely, uh, in the context of the pandemic, it there are two approaches: contact tracing and digitized medical records. And what's ha actually happening is, since money is flowing and it's obviously a state of emergency, many private companies are dying to work with governments on these high-tech emergency ID measures, right? Because these guys, of course, they want the publicity and they want the money. Many people, you know, so it can be good, can be useful, but there are also some doubts. Uh, this is what someone's saying. Uh, ID2020 is just the latest attempt to violate people's privacy using feel-good rhetoric. It's also part of a larger business plan. Microsoft and IBM's entire bottom line is to build identity systems. And he also added that governments need to establish identities of who owns these keys. And so they just say, okay, we'll have an open standard, call it decentralized and make it mandatory. So 
it will be very critical to know what tech will actually be used and to be careful as citizens that we do not just uh, give our data mercilessly to governments or big companies just because there's a lot of fear uh, you know in the air so blockchain and other technologies can do good we just need to be careful about how and when they are used now some more drama, Binance is accused by a Chinese media of operating their exchange in China, which is illegal since China banned all exchanges in 2017. A journalist actually tried to create an account on the Binance Chinese platform called BinanceZH.com and he managed to purchase some Bitcoin. Uh, which shouldn't be possible since it is illegal for Chinese mainlanders to exchange digital money unless they operate offshore, which is what Binance and Huobi did. Binance, as more than any other competitor in the crypto market, understood perfectly that it is better to ask for forgiveness than permission, and they kept a very aggressive uh, approach in everything they're doing. So... I don't think Binance will have issues with regulators, really. Um, I think they might start to be uh, very, maybe too big to fail. I'm not too sure, but they are clearly uh, the first exchange in the space. And this is something that might be a bit of a worry uh, in the future. So just of um, Binance is very cool. I love Binance. I use Binance. But I would like to see some more exchanges being... Uh, talked about as well and <laughs> Binance that doesn't help that Coinbase just fucking up everything 66% of Coinbase users are actually willing to leave the exchange due to mounting privacy concerns Coinbase really fucked it up in my opinion they recently announced that they were going to sell a software that could track uh, people in crypto and blockchain of course, privacy is paramount in crypto. This is one of the main value proposition, along with censorship and others. And having, you know, Coinbase, first of all, they don't have a good track record, right? They operate in the US and sometimes they do have to abide by the laws, the regulations and uh, comply with the authorities. And so they had to share data of 40,000 clients that traded more than 20K worth of crypto with the IRS. So this, of course, doesn't give a good feeling. And now that they're saying they might sell a tracking software, um, you know, that could use, for example, timestamps or the amount of transactions to try to guess which address would uh, be linked to which person. Uh, it's not good and in the past Coinbase was a very good exchange, maybe one of the best in the space, but nowadays there are many good alternatives and so if Coinbase takes such an approach regarding privacy, it is no surprise that many people will leave it for exchanges that will do things differently. So I would say this is actually quite concerning for Coinbase. Uh, I'm very curious to see if they're going to maybe change things up in the way they do things and maybe backtrack and go back and say, no, we're not going to sell that software. will be interesting to see how it goes. And very quickly, we're going to finish this video with Ethereum. 80% of the supply is now profitable. Which means, well, when people are in profit, they usually take profits. This is one of the best and biggest lessons we've all learned, I hope, in this past two, three years. So it is something that might uh, be a bit of a sell pressure on the Ethereum price. And finally, we're going to talk a bit about Ethereum miners and what they're going to do when Ethereum 2.0 launches with proof of stake. GPU versus ASIC. What does ASIC mean? ASIC means application specific integrated circuit. Essentially, it is chip that is on the hardware level manufactured customly to be very efficient uh, to perform computation for a certain type of algorithm. So for example, you will have ASICs for Bitcoin that will be very good to mine Bitcoins, but they, they might be bad to do other things. 
And so for Ethereum, it is actually written in the Ethereum white paper that Ethereum should be ASIC resistant. Uh, GPUs, so graphic cards, should be used to mine Ethereum. However, Bitmain actually managed to produce an ASIC for Ethereum. Um, and of course, GPU have much more flexibility because you can mine many other things, right? This is the trade-off. If you have something very specific, very efficient for something, it will be much worse for other things, while GPUs are more of a, you know, above average good to do many things and mine many altcoins, for example. So there are two things that miners can do when Ethereum switches to proof of stake. First of all, it's not going to be a, a very harsh transition. Proof of stake and proof of work will work together for a few months, maybe a few years. And miners then will either sell all their hardware to buy ETH and stake ETH, or they will just use their GPUs to mine altcoins. And what's gonna happen most likely is they're going to go for the latter, because if they're invested in infrastructure, if they negotiated contracts to have cheap electricity, they will not just let all that go to waste and stop mining altogether. So most likely this will be interesting because we will see an influx of um, computation power into other altcoins that use the same um, algorithm than Ethereum, which is at Ash or altcoins that can be mined with GPUs. So it's going to be very interesting to see which networks receive the hash power that is currently on the Ethereum network. And just a side note, of course, the number of Ethereum addresses that include uh, 32 ETH or more, which is the number required to be able to stake in ETH 2.0, is growing and it is approaching 120 thousands. That was it for today. I hope you liked the video. Please leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe, and I'll see you soon for more news. Bye.